Hello there, I'm Tech Dave, and today we're looking at my latest acquisition, the X1 Carbon 3rd Gen. It's got an uh, i7, and that's all I'm going to tell you for now. We're going to roll some credits, and then I'll be back with a bit more detail about the specs of the machine. So here we are with the machine. It's in quite good condition. We've got a couple of scratches. I got it for a good price, which I'm not going to tell you. Um, there's some scuffing here, but otherwise it's actually in quite a pleasing condition for the price I got it. Um, it's running Windows 10 Pro. Um, it's got fingerprint reader, which I'm going to use to log in in a minute, so you don't have to see my password. Cheeky cheeky. Um, so the rough specs are, so we've got an i7 5600U at 2.6 gigahertz. The turbo's up to 3.2, it's dual core with hyperthreading, so quad core. We've got 8 gigs of 1600 megahertz DDR3L RAM um, at 12800. Um, this, there is an option that comes with uh, a higher spec screen, but this is just uh, 1080p IPS. Uh, 256 megabyte, uh, gigabyte uh, SSD, NVMe M.2 SSD, Intel HD 5500 graphics, which we'll come back to later because I'm actually quite pleased with that. The wireless wireless LAN, sorry, the the basically the broadband card is amazing. It gets up to like 800 megabits per second, which is awesome. I've added ops. They, they didn't come with wireless WAN, but I added the Let's have a look. I added a wireless WAN card to it, which can get up to 150 up download and 50 upload. And I'll talk more about that in a bit, but it's the Sierra Wireless EM 7345 4G LTE. It's the fastest mobile broadband I've ever had on a laptop. And I'll explain to you why I love that in a bit. We'll come, come back to that more in a bit. Um, Bluetooth 4.0, no optical drive obviously, uh, it's, uh, where would they put it, this thing is so thin and light and delightful and it's just, ah, oh, barely weighs anything. Um, it says here 9.9 .9 hours on the battery life, so I assume that's when it's new, but I actually get up, upwards of 6 on battery saver and about 3 to 4 hours on the standard uh, power management settings. Um, I've actually got the one link dock which is over there which I'll show you in a bit which is quite handy um, it doesn't fit we'll go around the ports in a minute but um, it doesn't feature an Ethernet port the the IO is quite limited on this but it is quite a slim line device so I understand why that is the case what else have we got um, it's all USB 3 on the device but we'll look at that in a minute and then um, yeah that's all we've really got um, I'm just making sure I've got all the specs sorted. So I'll move on and show you the ports at a slightly different angle. So I'll be back post haste. So in regards I/O, I'll come back to the actual top plate. So on the right panel, we have I believe Kensington Lock CPU fan. Uh, this is a dongle that can slot that can be, as far as I'm aware, that you can attach an external ethernet dongle to usb 3.0 which i believe is always on on the other side we've got a dual headphone a microphone jack we've got usb 3 mini display port hdmi this is the one link dot connector i've got that off because i've got the one link um thing there but this is also your power jack and then on the rear we have which is in my case populated uh, a s a sim card slot so I've got a gift gaff SIM card in there at the moment, which get, maxes out about 30 megabit per second, but I've also got available a Vodafone card, which is a bit more expensive for their product, but you can get up, up to 60 megabit per second, which is the fastest LTE in England, as far as I'm aware. So we may look at that later in the video. I'm not entirely sure. Um, in regards on top, it's it's sleek the carbon i don't know whether my camera will do it justice but the the finish on this is just lovely it's been a bit scratched away on this one but the track point is pretty sweet it just functions like a trash point track point so there's nothing really to talk about on that but this um touchpad is arguably the best touchpad i've ever had on a thinkpad that i've ever owned but i've only ever had old thinkpads but the gesturing the pinching the multi-finger 
uh, movements and all that kind of stuff you can do is wonderful. Um, and I'm just, I'm quite smitten with it. I wasn't going to buy this originally. I was just going to do a brief review of it, but I just, I was so enamored by it. And I'll, I'll go through more about why that is um, in another section of the video, but I was just, the CPU and the graphics are quite, quite usable for low level gaming in some regards and also I've got GeForce Now which I've got running over the finally viable um, mobile broadband connection so I'm going to tell you what I'll do I'll switch over to uh, screen capture and then I'll talk more a little bit more about why I'm so smitten with this device and what it's usable for I'll be right back So just to give a bit of context, as you can see up here, um, we're in the Tomb Raider reboot. Um, so this, I've set it to 720p, um, 60 hertz. I'll show you actually. We got an average of 62, max average 62, so about 50 frames per second. Um, which for Intel HD graphics, I'm quite pleased with. Um, it's actually slightly power limited because I'll just show you the system settings that I set for that test. 720p, 60Hz, double buffer V-Sync, exclusive full screen display, monitor aspect ratio, blah, 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 low settings. So just to show you a rough gist there, but this is, if I don't know whether you'll be able to see there because my fat head will be in the way, but I've actually got it on battery saver. So if I pump this up to better performance, um, it may in fact do better but basically the point I'm trying to make is that the stuff that you can't run on Intel HD 4000 graphics which this 5500 graphics just runs nicely I also installed Devil May Cry just to see I might edit this out if it takes forever but just to see if it runs because I wanted to basically assess like how much of my games collection with this little incremental boost in the specs of the Intel HD graphics um, how much would it allow me to play? Um, so we'll, we'll, that remains to be seen. I've been playing a bit of World of Warcraft because that's quite a nice low spec game. And there's loads of little tweaks. Like I've been watching a lot of uh, low spec gamer. You should check out his channel. It's a really cool guy. Um, I haven't applied any of the tweaks yet, but it, it's made me think about it because, th yeah, this is so Devil May Cry is not viable. Let's just switch to here. So, so I need to install that first before we can play it um there's there's quite a lot that can be done with this little bit of graphic now the the issue i do have with it is because it's soldered ram soldered cpu it means that there's no upgrade path it, it is what you get what you see is what you get is your eight gigs of ddr3l ram that's 1600 megahertz quad core i7 but i didn't buy this to be a gaming device i bought it because of the size and the weight it's only 3.17 pounds for anyone that uses imperial measurements it's extremely light and thin and efficient and i've really been enjoying it and i've found that i don't know for many of you that may have seen the channel previously i've been banging on about wanting mobile broadband to work for a long time and every other mobile broadband card i've had is unviable as because they're only 3g or very very low 4g whereas i'm finding that i'm able to get quite decent speeds and i'll, I'll show you a little bit in the garden i'm going to go to the go garden or maybe go for a little walk and record i'll show you the sort of speeds you can get out of the device oh hold on um when you're on the go so the other day uh, with four out of five bars or three out of four bars I was able to get uh, about 35 megabit per second download speed and about I think it was 12 or 16 I'll rerun it again later for you where I can find a decent signal connection but the point being that this has actually become uh, an extremely viable GeForce Now device this is going to be horrible because I don't have a controller plugged in or anything so I don't quite know how I'm going to even play this game but there's, there's a lot of my game collection that can be run on these graphics let's just skip if I can how do I skip well let me skip well let's watch this cutscene while I talk um, the point being that like 
that little incremental boost in graphical performance and the 1080p screen if I don't know if you can see on the actual device like what you're seeing it does not do justice to this laptop screen quality it's a lovely display great viewing angles you can see it pretty I mean obviously it's slightly glitchy because of the way I'm recording it and there's a video effect on the screen but it, it looks great um, and that incremental increase in power has meant that a lot more of my game libraries opened up basically and then if you include if you bring to the table GeForce Now and the mobile broadband suddenly open up a whole different world of possibilities so I'm going to go see what that screen was and then return with a little bit of footage of mobile broadband and GeForce Now Here we are, I'm in the car then and we're at the delightful location of an, a secret location in a car park and um, I'm going to show you what this uh, laptop performs like So we're out and about, we've got four bars, let's focus there, come on, focus, focus, focus four bars signal and I've got um, speed test open I'm not going to show you because it's got my IP address, so let's cover that with my thumb We've got four bars. The maximum speed for this network is 35 megabit per second. And I tested it a minute ago. I was getting more upload speed than download speed, which seemed a bit bizarre. So I don't know if that's a driver issue. But with... There we go, seven. So that's all right. At that speed, we can still use GeForce Now, I think. Look at that. So we're getting nearly 15 megabit per second. I have had 35 on this before, but I don't quite know the issue is, as you see down here, if you focus, so yeah, we've got 7 download and 13 upload, which seems entirely bizarre, but that does mean we can, in theory, run GeForce now on the lowest setting. So you can see I'm just opening GeForce now. I have got a Vodafone SIM card available to me that I haven't topped up yet. This is on GIFGAF, the max is out at 35 frame, uh, frames per second, what am I talking about? 35 megabit per second in there at the moment. And they're really cheap and reasonable. Oh, here we go. Right, mute the laptop. So, I did previously have the Founders Edition, but I forgot to pay. So I'm just using the free version at the moment. Mute the laptop. So we don't get any DMCA on the sound effects. I'll come back once it's logged in. So that, that was only like 15, 20 seconds. It said 25 in front of me, but I actually worked out to jump from 25 to zero pretty rapidly. And I'm just on, I think I'm on 720p. 30 frames per second and really low bit rate so you see we've got spotty connection but it is, does appear to be loading the game whether it's playable I don't know I've had better performance on in other areas let's just load the map this is just raft so it's not particularly CPU intensive but that doesn't really matter because we're streaming it from the laptop look at this lovely view so nice here. So Trez Relaxante. Can I ask you to point that at the screen for me? Yeah. We're filming, so. Let's see what it performs like. It's loading, loading, loading. Right. Can you see the screen from there? Yeah. Oh no. There we go. So we're in game in Raft. Pretty responsive. Need to right click your colours and select green. Get green. And paint some shit. It performs as you would expect. This is. Getting, I don't think we're getting input latency as much as it's not, not lined up properly. So yeah, it seems to respond pretty well.
No less, no more laggy than the the game normally is on a low end system. So, and if I just show you the settings we're on, so in game we're on nineteen hundred by twelve hundred. Interesting. So if we dropped it down to seven twenty p, we'd probably get better performance. But we're just going to stick that on ten eighty p. It's on all fastest settings, and it's there's. No noticeable latency. I think the issue I'm having is that, that there's with Lenovo keyboards and mice because the mouse, as far as I'm aware, is an integrated part of the keyboard module. You can't, whoops, Daisy, you can't use the mouse clicks and the keyboard at the same time because of rollover. And that, so, like, it only registers one key input per thing. So let's just exit the game. Uh, yeah, let's just save that randomly. And then I'll show you my GeForce Now settings. Do, do, do. So to get that to run on a little spotty connection, I went into, let's zoom in here. I went into custom, and then I set the max bit rate to the lowest. Resolution to 720p, 30 frames per second. Just for poor network conditions, etc., etc., and this just is, enables it to work. So, when you actually test that network, you'll see that it says it's not recommended. Hopefully, if it's working as I expect it to, usually says it's not recommended. Yeah, streaming over your network is not recommended. However, with those settings, it does work. So, you can adjust this megabit per second here on the right, this thing. So the, the bit rate, and it does actually go down to 10, 24 by 7, 6, 8, but I thought it's not the right aspect ratio. But yeah, in theory, this is entirely usable. Um, and if we had more signal, I mean, the thing is, we're on four bars at the moment, so you're not likely to really reliably get more than four bars anywhere. Although it does, I have got more than four bars before, and at which point I got an extremely high... Well, 30, they've got the full 35 megabit per second. So yeah, that's that's that. So I'll see you back at home for some more information about the laptop. I'm just just in yet another car park. Just we've got whoops, Daisy. We've got the same amount of signal. So. Where is it? Four bars. I'm just on YouTube. I just want to show you. You can. Browse, browse the internet pretty well, even with those limited speeds. It's quite snappy and responsive. You know? I just wanted to show that it works. Despite the slow speeds, it still seems to optimize it and run pretty well. There's me on Twitter, at drbradley46, feel free to at me. Also, I'm just perusing some Netflix as well. So, in terms of actual usability, um, it's, it's like slow broadband, but even with that really limited mega download and upload speed, like you can still perfectly watch like 1080p video. And it looks, you can't, this camera's not doing it justice really. But, and I've got it on battery saver mode so it would be a lot brighter as well. This screen holds its own quite well. I think because it's the IPS, it holds its own quite well. I've just changed the settings so it's full brightness. Holds its own quite well, as I've said three times now. Um, as a streaming and portable device. Um, and you, yeah, I don't really notice any lag or slowdown or stuttering or buffering. And I can watch while we're driving as well, because my partner's just in doing some shopping. So I'm doing cheeky filming. But yeah, you can watch stuff. And it, despite the bloatedness, it works quite well. Yeah. So just a, one list of like little addendum as well. Um, you can easily stream. 1080p 
I'm not going to bother trying 4K because it will rinse my data, but um, a little tip if you are using mobile broadband, just whack that bad, hello I'm recording, whack that bad boy down to like 240 or 360p, and you get much better performance and it eats less of your data, and it still looks fairly reasonable. So this video is starting to drag on a little bit, but the last thing I wanted to show you was something that I would recommend getting if you got if you do buy the X1 Carbon, which is the One Link dock because because there's only two USB ports, and if you're using it in a kind of home environment rather than just on the go, it adds so as you can see two USB three there, two USB two Display Port, um, DVI or whatever it is, the DVI with the VGA pins and then you pass through for power and ethernet which I find invaluable and there's two three USB 3's on the front and a headphone microphone jack um, I'd recommend getting that if, you, if you're getting the, the X1 Carbon but in general I really like the device I was quite smitten with it from the minute I purchased it um, well I didn't initially purchase it I borrowed it and I decided to purchase it because it was lovely um, I'd recommend getting mobile broadband if that's your sort of thing because it just makes it so much more portable. I, I it's like everything that I wanted mobile broadband to be with other devices, but never really got round to finding adequate service for make it work. I would recommend trying Vodafone if you're in the UK because they do up to 60 megabit per second download speeds. Now I don't know if that's real world how much of that you would actually get, um, but. Yeah, it's my strongly held opinion that Vodafone is probably the best way to go. Hold on, I've got one last thing to show you and then I'll be at the end of the video. So just before I go, I wanted to show you this that I acquired for the tombly sum of £30. And it is basically a project device for me to work on. It's uh, X230 which I got for £30 plus £7 posting packaging. Sweet. Um, the screen is completely destroyed. There's fracturing all throughout the display shell, the display housing. This is a new 9-volt, 9-cell uh, nine battery that I already had for some reason. I don't remember exactly why. I think I bought... It was meant to buy one for the T430, but I actually bought it for the... I bought the wrong battery. So that gets about four and a half hours battery life. Um, I've just got a 60 gig SSD in it, but I was basically wondering what you guys think I should do with it. it they're just like, should I get the 1080p display or should I just get the 1366 by 768 IPS display? Um, it activated Windows 10 when I put an SSD in it. Um, it came with four gigs of RAM, so yeah, any any insight as to what might be good mods to do on this? I was thinking about either getting the backlit keyboard initially and then putting that in my x230 tablet because the x230 tablet doesn't have a think like whereas this does i'll just show you what it looks like with the so the screen on this is absolutely destroyed so in regards to screen options hit me up with some links and maybe recommendations as to what the best panel i can get for this is and i'm happy to mod the device it only cost me 30 pounds so it was not a massive investment but i do really have limited soldering skills and limited ability in terms of complex engineering aspects of modding it but yeah hit me up in the comments with what you think you should do with this x230 and feel free to post links and anything else like that and i uh, hope you enjoyed the x1 carbon video and probably the next video i do will be on modding this x230 so stick around and i'll see you there bye